AFE has bestowed upon Munafar and Alahi is called the International Press Freedom Award. As you know, the honorees are unable to be here in person. They are in a top security prison in Iran, having been accused of made up crimes. What they actually did was tell the truth about the death of a young woman who got beaten up by Iranian enforcers for letting a wisp of hair escape from her headscarf. Yes, people get beaten up by police in other countries, such as the United States, for stupid reasons too. They die there too. Their deaths have sparked riots there too. But by and large, the journalists reporting on the beatings, the deaths, and the riots have not been thrown into prison and accused of espionage and threatened with the de death penalty as Nilufar and Alafi have, Alahi have been. These arrests and these spurious accusations demonstrate three truths. First, that Iran is a totalitarian regime dedicated, as all such regimes are and have been, to crushing all versions of the story except their own. Second, that we live in an age in which attacks on journalists who are simply doing their job, which is to tell the truth, are on the increase. If we were to build a monument to murdered and imprisoned journalists around the world, it would now be a very large monument indeed. But third, Journalists devoted to truthful reporting have not been extinguished. Despite hardships and adversity, they carry on. We regret the fact that Nilufar and Alahi cannot be with us tonight and are instead possibly being subjected to the thuggish methods of Evan prison. But we can also be amazed to see such courage and action. To quote from the most famous French resistance song from World War II, friend, if you fall, another one will step from the shadows to take your place. Yes, unfortunately, it seems to be wartime again. And part of that war is a war of ideas, a clash of ideologies. Will we stand on the side of democracy or will we slide into authoritarianism, despotism, tyranny? To someone of my age, this past year has felt like a reprise. I remember World War II. I also remember the Iranian Revolution, which began as an uprising against despotism with high hopes for a better society, but then devolved into a despotism of a different sort. Much of the new oppression has been aimed at women. The crime that Nilufar and Malahi were imprisoned for reporting is symbolic of the harsh regime under which Iranian women in particular have been forced to live. The protests that have resulted were begun by women, though many men have now joined in. How many people have been killed? It's difficult even to know, given the attempts to suppress even that much knowledge. We in Canada lead comparatively peaceful lives. We take things for granted. Among the things we take for granted are a democratic political system, however perfect, and the right to freedom of expression. These may both be on shakier grounds here than we think. Extremists, both of the right and of the left, are no friends to democracy or to freedom of expression either. Many in this room tonight are journalists, members of the Honorable Fourth Estate. This term dates back to before the French Revolution. The church, the nobility, and the commoners had a share in political power but the journalists and pamphleteers, both before, during, and after the revolution, saw it as their role to act as watchdogs, telling us what public figures were doing and holding them accountable 
for abuses and corruption. This is what journalism does at its best. And this is what the Lufar and the Elahi were doing. You are honoring them tonight. Perhaps you will also be inspired by them. More than ever, we need such honest and courageous voices. We will all light a candle for their safe return. Now I would like to invite Sharam Rafizada and his daughter Sheila to the stage to accept the International Press Freedom Award on behalf of Nilufar and Alahe. <laughs> <laughs> 